Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo, the boat fam, it's the director. Chargers fans, we finally got some breaking news here on the channel, man. The Los Angeles Chargers have officially agreed to terms with ex-Baltimore Ravens running back Gus Edwards. All aboard the Gus bus, y'all. It's time for a change in offense. The Los Angeles Chargers are indeed shifting gears to more of a power balance offense and introducing one of the best power backs in free agency was definitely a good place to start. You know, it's another really good move to make if you want to improve your run game. The Chargers also have agreed to terms with a, a free agent tight end by the name of Will Disley who honestly kind of fell off my radar because he got cut just, what, a couple of days ago? Did not know he was available. One of the better uh, run-blocking tight ends you're going to find in the entirety of the NFL. These are some big moves, man, uh, 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 for uh, Jim Harbaugh and his offense. Greg Roman, I'm sure, you know, grinning ear to ear with some of these moves. What about Jesse Minter, man? Well, the Chargers also made a move there in re-signing one of their own in Halohi Gilman, who I think is going to be just a fantastic fit in Jesse Minter's defense. We're going to roll the dice here, man. I got NFL Network going on right now. We got Twitter on the side over here, hoping no more huge news comes down the pipeline while we're recording this video. But we're going to go over these signings, man, and why some of these uh, signings are some of the biggest, you know, moves the Chargers could have made given, you know, their cap situation, but as well, really good and solid moves that keeps them flexible, especially in the draft. Should be a pretty good one, man. Before we do kick off, uh, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Newcomers definitely take a look at this special here before we do kick off hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this chargers content small amount of time you guys take that the like sub and bell notification helps me out a lot let's get into it baby lights camera action Breaking news, the Los Angeles Chargers have signed Gus Edwards, Will Disley, and have indeed re-signed Alohi Gilman. I don't want to miss any more news here, so we're going to try and chug this one along a little bit more than usual, all right? Let's go ahead and start off with Gus Bus, a.k.a. Gus Edwards. This, in all honesty, guys, was a solid move. Yes, we didn't get Saquon Barkley. We didn't get King Henry, uh, who's still available. Who knows if that still happens? I doubt it. But, you know, quite honestly, when you take a look at the situation of the Chargers, this was actually not a bad move to keep your flexibility open in the future when it comes to this draft, next draft, et cetera, et cetera. We even threw out the idea or threw around the idea of maybe the Chargers going Blake Corm and then Donovan Edwards next season, really bring those, you know, Michigan running backs into the fold with a Gus Edwards. A lot of flexibility here, man. And quite honestly, when you take a look at Gus Edwards, maybe a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, brushing off because he's not one of the elite, elite names in this free agency class, but he's not one to be uh, trifled with, man. This is a very physical, dominating, and dangerous, I would say short yardage, weapon in the nfl now so first off first off what are we going to get uh, gus edwards in terms of of contract like we said it's a good value right now it's estimated we don't have any official numbers quite yet but it's estimated that gus edwards would be receiving in and around the realm of a two-year seven million dollar contract which is going to put him in and around three and a half million dollars a year yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> I think what was it? Uh, Saquon Barkley ended up getting somewhere along the lines of twelve and a half million dollars a season. Definitely more than I was expecting for the running back market to receive. So at that value, it's certainly very exciting. Of course, that's unofficial. We don't know if it's going to be more or less. Uh, but that's what was has been projected by guys on NFL Network and PFF. We'll get official word on that later. So right off the bat, very good value. Also coming in from a system that's very familiar, helping the Chargers build this new offense and yes a shade of baltimore ravens purple but as well as a michigan wolverines yellow it feels like or i should say blue it should it feels like the chargers definitely kind of jumped on a no-brainer here with joe hortiz coming in uh from baltimore now what are we getting in a gus Edwards. Now, let's go ahead and look at the stats here real quick, okay? The first thing everyone's going to be looking at is the stats. What does Gus Edwards look like? What is he bringing to the table? The first thing I kind of want to throw at you guys, even beyond the stats, 
uh, first off, is going to be this number right here. You guys wanted a power back. A lot of us wanted Derrick Henry for this very reason, uh, but we got it. We got it anyway at a cheaper value. Six foot one, 238 pounds. Yes, Derrick Henry's still bigger, but quite honestly, this is going to be one of the bigger, more brooding running backs that we've had in a long time. The Chargers have really kind of gone with this kind of scat back idea, smaller guys. No disrespect to Austin Eckler, you know, pound for pound, one of the strongest dudes in the NFL. But this really fits more what Jim Harbaugh wants in his offense, specifically why he brought in Greg Roman. This guy's going to be a ground and pound, old style, you know, old school, you know, mentality kind of offensive mind. And that's exactly what Gus Edwards is bringing to the table. Now, first off, let's take a look at some of the stats here. Uh, going ahead, first starting off in this season. Now, definitely nothing to really scream about at first glance, right? You're going to see, you know, double digit carries a lot around here, but didn't really break, you know, any records in terms of yards per game. This is a little bit deceiving because of how the Baltimore Ravens operate their offense on the ground. This is very much so a running back by committee uh, operation in Baltimore, and it kind of reflects in some of the numbers that you're going to see. Uh, from Gus Edwards. However, a very important number I want you guys to pay attention to are the touchdowns, though. Ending the season with 13 touchdowns. I think he ranked somewhere around third in the NFL and running backs scoring on the ground. Absolutely fantastic numbers there. Uh, adding exactly and kind of giving us an idea of exactly what we're adding to this offense. We're getting ourselves a power back, a goal line threat, right? A dude that can help us score inside the five. Oh, for the love of God, man. That's been one of the more frustrating aspects of this uh, offense for the longest time is getting the ball in the red zone, just making nothing of it. Going from what we were to a running back that has posted ridiculous numbers in terms of touchdowns in the red zone makes me feel a lot better. Okay, we needed this weapon so desperately uh, in scoring as well as in converting, man. The Chargers, outside of maybe Xander Horvath a little bit, which they kind of let go of that project very quickly, didn't really have that short yardage guy. And that's exactly what Gus Edwards is bringing to the table. We needed somebody like this on the team Desperately, I chose this image specifically for the fact that he is plowing his way through the Kansas City Chiefs, showing us exactly the kind of weapon that he is. This is a true power back. He's got some nice speed behind him, too, given his size. But really, quite honestly, guys, this is going to be a weapon that really helps build a solid foundation in L.A., in building the Baltimore Ravens flavor running attack, while also giving us flexibility uh, uh, in the draft, okay? And the reason I keep bringing up the draft is because, yes, the the cheap contract of a Gus Edwards doesn't, you know, uh, uh, put a shoe in him as in terms of like an RB1. Like, he could definitely be RB1 for this team. He could be the bell, you know, cow guy. But at the same time, you're not obligated to because you paid him a whole bunch of money. And this is kind of, I think, an idea that the Baltimore Ravens have been running with the past couple of seasons. Uh, pairing him up with J.K. Dobbins was definitely a very, very smart move. These guys would have been, you know, one of the better yin-yang uh, running back tandems in the NFL. Unfortunately for the Ravens in particular, nobody could stay healthy. The tragic story of J.K. Dobbins is one that is felt throughout the league in despair. It's so tough to watch that talent just not be able to stay on the field. Uh, but it did offer a good idea in terms of what Gus Edwards can provide in terms of that power, uh, as well as, you know, pairing him up with another guy that can bring that juice. And I think that's kind of what the Chargers are aiming at with a signing in Gus Edwards. I do want that tandem. And I do think bringing in a young stud to help pair up with Gus Edwards really does give us that dual threat that we're looking for. Okay, I should say maybe two-headed monster. All right. So adding to that, Pac-Man, what are some of the guys I see the Chargers pairing up with Gus Edwards via the draft to really build a solid and consistent running attack? Some of my favorite dudes that I could even imagine pairing up with Gus Edwards. Sure, we'll start with Trey Benson, who is an awesome all-around running back. You're looking for speed. The guy's going to bring it. Like I said with J.K. Dobbins, we need some juice you know, to throw in with that protein shake of Gus Edwards. And I do think Trey Benson would bring the juice. And this is a great way to introduce a new running back into the league where, you know, a lot of the times it goes overlooked because of how good a lot of running backs are out the gate, but these are still rookies, right? And to put the weight, the full weight of a Greg Roman running attack on a rookie, 
would be quite difficult. And to share that load with a power back that really is one of the featured weapons on that particular offense is a very smart move. Trey Benson, to me, still that number one guy. Um, honestly, pairing him up, you're going to have to spend up, let's be honest here. You're talking a day two pick minimum. Uh, I think more likely the round two at this point, but pairing him up with Gus Edwards is a very, very good idea. And one that if the Chargers are very serious about the running attack is definitely not a bad move in terms of investment. A player that I like a little bit more, though, in this uh, instance that is kind of growing on me because of the situation that would be revolved around this particular pick. Um, is Jalen Wright. Now, Jalen Wright, to me, is probably going to go somewhere in and around the realm of like the middle of the second round, maybe even late second round. And this kind of introduces a scenario where the Chargers have traded down uh, and still can get a guy that pairs very, very well with Gus Edwards. This guy's fast. This guy's shifty. Uh, all around looks like a bell cow as well. Uh, but maybe, you know, paired up with Gus Edwards, who brings a little bit of more of that thump, is a really, really good tandem to have with this team and also helps us groom Jalen Wright into being the RB1 of the future. Don't get me wrong, guys. Trey Benson, Jalen Wright, those guys can be RB1s in this league. But giving them the buffer of two years with a Gus Edwards is definitely a smart move. One of the more underrated uh, running backs that I definitely have to add to this list as well because I do think that this is a huge possibility is the Chargers grabbing another value running back. I'm talking fourth, fifth round. And I think Isaac uh, Guarando as a... Uh, Garendo, excuse me, is going to be a great, great value for whatever team decides to pick him up. And this kind of gives the Chargers flexibility here because when you pair up a guy that's a late rounder with Gus Edwards, there's not a lot of pressure on the rookie, right? But you can let him kind of do what he does best. And that's, again, add a little bit of versatility to this running back room. This guy brings the lightning where Gus Edwards brings the thunder. Gus Edwards, a power back. Isaac, he's going to be a very shifty, fast running back who ran the fastest 40 in the combine this season. A ridiculous 4-3-3. The Chargers have been kind of famous for finding these late round and, and undrafted gems, especially in you know, positions uh, uh, um, uh, that require a lot of you know skill and stuff like that. I think this could be one of those situations when you have kind of the perfect pairing and flexibility because of a free agent signing like uh, Gus Edwards at this point. So I like all of these guys as pairing. I'm going to give an honorable mention here, even though he would be a little bit more expensive in terms of like top of the second round. I do have to put Jonathan Brooks firmly back on the table for me, whereas he wasn't before. Brooks is an interesting situation coming into the NFL, as I do expect him to be the number one running back on a lot of teams' boards. This is RB1. Trey Benson's kind of it for me because I do think He's going to be healthy, right? He's available. He shows that longevity, less tread, or I should say more tread. Jonathan Brooks, recently injured, is going to be one of those guys that you have to wait and see on, right? He's going to get a late start more than likely. Um, the injury is going to limit his involvement in his rookie season. But with a signing like Gus Edwards, there's not a lot of pressure to do that. And maybe just maybe the Chargers can get their guy this season, pair him up with a late round pick, maybe another cheaper free agent, and let Jonathan Brooks uh, grow into and heal uh, as the new Chargers RB1 of the future. And Jonathan Brooks would be a very, very good option in the future, man. Again, the best running back in this class. Just really not on my board because I don't know how available he would be. Gus Edwards gives us a little bit of buffer in those regards. So welcome to the Chargers, Gus Edwards. Gus Bus has officially arrived, everybody all aboard. The next move that the Chargers made shortly after that was another awesome move in the direction of creating a very consistent and dangerous running attack. It's going to be uh, Will Disley. Well, Will Disley, welcome to the Los Angeles Chargers. A very underrated move, under-the-radar guy that kind of blew my mind the more I looked into him, dude. Again, he slipped through the cracks for me. He was a, maybe created a free agent not too long ago. Uh, didn't have the chance to look into him and what his characteristics would bring to a run uh, offense. They are very impressive. Okay, they are very impressive. First off, Will Disley uh, agreeing to a three-year, $14 million contract, which puts him in and around the realm of $4.6 million per season, is not going to break the bank. That's a great, great value for a player that's going to be very involved in your run game. Okay, and to be clear to a lot of guys out there, no, I don't think this is going to be your featured tight end in this offense. Okay, this is your blocking tight end. This is your in-line tight end. This is the guy that's involved pretty much in every running uh, uh, snap 
this upcoming season. Greg Roman's going to love this guy in terms of blocking. The Chargers will still be looking for more tight ends in terms of receiving options for Justin Herbert. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, okay? Will Disley, however, just released, fresh off the press, get scooped up by the Chargers relatively quickly because of a huge trait that he brings to the offense. Of course, we have been talking about the run. And, it's, and his blocking abilities, welcome Will Disley, who ranked third in the NFL last season. Sorry if it's a little bit hard to see here, guys. Uh, third in the NFL last season, just behind guys like George Kittle. <laughs> George Kittle, widely regarded as the best running uh, run blocking tight end in the NFL. Them's is no small bananas, man. Uh, <laughs> Will Disley is a huge get. And this is after I was uh, going after dudes like Kobe Parkinson was definitely an awesome option. Adam Troutman. These guys are very good run blockers. Will Disley's on another level, man. The Chargers went out there and they got their guy to block for Gus Edwards and uh, all Chargers running backs this season. Fantastic, fantastic move there. One that I wish I had a little bit more foresight on, but you know what? The end result is that the Chargers running attack is starting to look very, very legit. Okay, welcome to the team, Disley. Again, don't expect him to be this huge weapon in the receiving game. Uh, just definitely expect him to be very, very involved in their run game. Sure, he's very capable. Not a definitely not a bad, you know, underneath guy. Uh, uh, he put up some okay numbers considering he's primarily a blocking guy last couple of seasons for Seattle. But this is a huge get, guys, and at a great value, might I add. The last I saw, wasn't he at eight million a year with Seattle? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm spitballing here, but that would be, you know, half. <laughs> of what he was being paid in Seattle. Great, great pickup for Jim Harbaugh. I'm sure he's very, very excited. Okay. But does this take, a lot of people are worried that this takes Brock Bowers off of the table for the Chargers. I'm going to tell you guys right now, because I saw a lot of this on Twitter just after the signing. No! <laughs> Brock Bowers is still very much so on the table. Now, the scenario is probably going to have to be a little bit different. I think Brock Bowers certainly more in play with a trade down, uh, but you could certainly still draft this guy and they will both be very very involved i promise you guys signing a player worth five or less than five million dollars a season is not going to take a talent like brock bowers off the board i promise you and that's for the simple fact that again disley the blocking tight end he's got a job if you draft a brock bowers or you sign you know a skilled tight end it's going to be for their ability in receiving and of course brock bowers brings the benefit of you know blocking as well jim harbaugh is very famous for using multiple tight ends that's the dream right there when you bring in a new tight end that he's a very good receiver but also capable blocker this is what we're talking about in still featuring brock bowers in this offense he can definitely be that guy as a receiver definitely be that guy as a blocker very involved both of these guys will be very involved uh in the offense regardless of the chargers signing a cheaper one in free agency so yes this is a guy that's still very much so on the table for me but what's very exciting, especially exciting with the signing of Gus Edwards and, and, and excuse me, Disley, is that this firmly puts non-blocking tight ends back on the table for me as well. Because let's say, yes, the Chargers, which is in the opinion of a lot of fans, the number one move could be Malik Neighbors, which I'm not going to argue against that. He's kind of jumped up there for me too. If the Chargers are picking at five and he's still on the board, him and Bowers, I'm, I'm picking Neighbors at this point, okay? But these other tight ends are back on the on, on the on the radar for me. Whereas they were kind of not there before. I love dudes like Jatavian Sanders and Theo Johnson, right? These would be awesome, awesome weapons for Justin Herbert. The only problem is we couldn't take them as serious because they're not the most recognized run blockers, right? They're not going to be that guy, uh, uh, that inline tight end that's going to be blocking for your running back every play. No, they're more of playmakers. Sure, they're... They can block, but they're not going to be known for that. And that that flexibility of Will Disley is why Jatavian Sanders is back on the table. These guys are awesome, dude. Uh, I don't remember what his time ended up being, but Jatavian Sanders looked very, very fast in my research um, in, in his games in, in Texas. And, and Theo Johnson looks like a physical specimen as well. Um, these are dudes that are firmly back on the table for me as receiving options for Justin Herbert. A lot of you guys would say, well, you know, if he doesn't block, then there's not going to be any reason for Jim Harbaugh to bring him on. I would disagree a little bit. I'm not quite sure. I don't, I, you know, honestly, I wasn't looking at the position grade that clearly, you know, when I was in my teens watching Vernon Davis play. But if I remember right, and if I'm to be understood, not the best run blocker out there, Vernon Davis with the Niners and Jim Harbaugh. Uh, he was involved, but he was certainly viewed as that vertical threat. Vernon Davis was one of the fastest tight ends I've ever seen. 
And uh, that is something that was very, very important to Jim Harbaugh's offense back then, man. Davis was one of those centerpiece weapons of that offense. Of course, you had Frank Gore and a couple of nice receivers out there. But Davis was a very, very involved tight end in the receiving game. Uh, and that's why I think a big reason for the Chargers still keeping guys like Jatavian Sanders on the board, even if they do get Malik Neighbors, is a very realistic thing. My, my watch is blowing up, guys. Hang on. I got to look at this. The Chargers make another move here. Uh, Panthers making a trade. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I think we're still good. All right. To wrap up this video, guys, because I got to get back to this and get back on Twitter. Uh, the Chargers have made another move uh, very, very recently here. Let me actually see if we can find the freaking picture. There we go. Final news of this video. The Chargers are bringing back Alohi Gilman. And as you guys know, if you watch my videos, he's one of those guys that I'm like, dude, out of free agents, Alohi's probably at the top of my list. Get this guy back. He's going to look awesome in the Jesse Minter defense. He's a thumper. He's a hard hitter. He's very physical. And he got way better in coverage, man. This is one of those ball hawks out there. You guys remember some of the interceptions by Alohi, Alohi this season? Dude was amazing. And I think, honestly, when it comes to the free agent market in terms of safeties, this is one of the guys that you just had to bring back. Sure, it was tempting to look at uh, um, uh, Simmons. It was very tempting to look at um, Justin Simmons. It's very you know tempting to look at guys like Micah Hyde and a lot of the dudes that were that were cut recently. But quite honestly, Alohi just felt like the best fit for me. A dude that's not going to break the bank. I think it was shown that he was expected to be around a two-year, $11 million contract, which puts him in the realm about $5.5 million a season. That's a great value to me even now. I was expecting him. I think others were projecting him to be a little bit lower, but I was honestly expecting him to be around this number. And even then, I like that number quite a bit. So welcome back, Alohi Gilman. Jesse Minter's going to love this guy, and I think the uh, the defense is going to be in very good hands in terms of their secondary with Alohi patrolling back there. So that's going to do it for now, man. I, I got NFL Network on above me. I'm going to be watching all day for more moves. Uh, but you guys in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts on this. Again, I apologize. We did not get Derrick Henry. I mean, he's still out there. We did not get Saquon Barkley. We didn't get that huge star of the running back position in free agency. But, you know, in the end, we got a guy. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I wanted the Chargers to maybe get their guy now uh, in free agency in terms of Saquon or, or, or Derrick Henry. And that would have been very exciting. But quite honestly, this move, which doesn't break the bank and keeps the draft very relevant, is also super, super exciting, at least to me. OK, the fact that we could maybe, you know, strike in with Trey Benson or Jalen Ride or even Jonathan Brooks excites me because you are going to be able to build an offense for the long haul. Cool beans, man. I'm about it. Will Disley's a great move. Alohi Gilman's going to be a great move. Um, we're off to a really good start. But brace yourselves, Chargers fans. I'm going to give you this one warning, okay? Everything's all fine and dandy right now, but the the checks almost do, okay? Tom Telesco put this team in a very interesting situation in terms of the cap. You guys know this. We have until Wednesday be to become cap compliant. Right now, the Chargers with these deals in place are certainly not going to be cap compliant, even though they're cheaper. Um... What my warning is to you guys that something's going to happen in the next 24 to 72 hours. Okay, maybe even the next couple hours. I don't know. In terms of the Chargers parting ways with a pretty big player, maybe two, maybe more. Um, there's a lot of talk that Jim Harbaugh and and uh, that new you know regime with, with Joe Ortiz um, could really be burning it down a little bit to bring in the new, out with the old, in with the new. So guys like Joey Bosa, Mike Williams, certainly, Keenan Allen, who's been in talks recently, and uh, Khalil Mack. These guys could be on the move very quickly. The very minimum, Wednesday is going to be your deadline where the Chargers need to be cap compliant. So if the Chargers are going to make a trade or a cut, it's got to be before then. Keep your eyes peeled. Chargers about to make another move. Could be today. I'm expecting it to be in the next couple of days at the very least. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. We'll see you next time. As always, bolt up, stay frosty. All aboard the Gus Bus, baby. Let's go.